Jenny lowered her head, feeling a bit awkward. Can't we take things slowly? We're already married, so people will find out eventually. Sensing her unease, Julian sighed and said, All right. But at least come with me to the office. I want to introduce you to my workplace. Jenny smiled and nodded in agreement. After about 15 minutes, they arrived at Julian's house. He asked Jenny to go inside first, as he had to take an urgent phone call. Jenny nodded and stepped into the house. In his study, Julian called his assistant, Raphael, in a serious tone. Get the best smartphone available and bring it here. Also, get a new SIM card for Jenny with the same number. You've got 20 minutes. Raphael, startled by the sudden order, quickly rushed to fulfill it. He knew how tough and cold Julian could be when it came to work, and he could only pray for those who dared to cross him. After ending the call, Julian found Jenny fast asleep on the sofa. Gently, he lifted her and laid her down on the bed, covering her with a blanket. He sat beside her for a moment, kissed her forehead softly, and whispered, One day, you'll be completely mine. I'll wait for you to fall in love with me. With that, Julian left the room and headed back to his study. As Julian left, Jenny stirred awake, feeling warmth in her heart from his words. Though she didn't fully understand why Julian cared so much for her, she was touched by his sincerity. Surrounded by those feelings, Jenny soon drifted back to sleep. In the study, Julian called Sicko. Is everything ready? Sicko responded enthusiastically, Yes, boss. The quartz team is prepped and awaiting your orders. Julian smiled and said, Let's wait a bit. I want to see what they're planning. Sicko understood his boss's intent and silently hoped those who opposed Julian wouldn't meet a terrible fate. Julian then asked, What about the bodyguards I requested for my wife? All set, Sicko replied confidently. Satisfied with the response, Julian ended the call and began to reflect. He thought back to when he took over from his father as CEO of Bagatama Corporation and leader of the underworld. Bagatama was a massive multinational company that often faced threats. To protect the business, his grandfather, Herman, had entered the underworld. Over time, Herman's influence grew, and now, after his father, Julian was the one at the helm of both the corporation and the criminal empire. Julian knew that his family had long adapted to this world, but Jenny hadn't. She was his one true vulnerability, and if their enemies discovered that, her life could be in danger. Julian was determined to protect Jenny at all costs, no matter what it took, and he knew he couldn't walk away from the underworld. When Jenny woke up, it was already night. She found herself alone and decided to check the bathroom before heading downstairs. In the living room, she saw a housekeeper cleaning. Where's Julian? Jenny asked. The housekeeper bowed her head and replied, The young master is in his study. Jenny raised an eyebrow. Does he work late every night? Just as the housekeeper was about to answer, the doorbell rang. The housekeeper opened the door, revealing Raphael, who looked exhausted and disheveled as he hurriedly entered. Seeing Raphael's state, Jenny grew concerned and asked, What happened, Mr. Raphael? Why do you look like this? Still catching his breath, Raphael could only gesture for water. Jenny quickly asked the housekeeper to fetch him a glass, and once he had a drink, Raphael explained that he had spent hours replacing a lost SIM card and was terrified of Julian's reaction. He believed only Jenny could help him. Looking at Jenny with pleading eyes, Raphael begged, Please, ma'am, you have to save me. The boss will kill me if I don't fix this. Please, help me. Jenny was shocked to see Raphael in such a state and responded firmly, Calm down. I'll help you. But first, tell me what exactly happened. Raphael anxiously began explaining, and Jenny furrowed her brow. How can he expect you to work like that? This isn't your responsibility. I'll talk to him. Don't worry. 
Wiping away what looked like tears, Raphael expressed his gratitude sincerely. Thank you, ma'am. Jenny nodded and asked, Mr. Assistant, does he often work this late? Raphael sighed, he's like a machine. A complete workaholic. If he could, he'd work 24 hours a day without sleep. In the office, he often forgets to eat and regularly gets sick from lack of rest. The doctor advised him to get at least 8 hours of sleep, but he barely manages 4. He's utterly obsessed with work. I wish someone could make him stop. Shaking her head, Jenny stood up. I'm going to his study to make sure he gets some rest, she said, heading toward the door. Raphael watched in astonishment and asked, Ma'am, where are you going? I'm going to bring him to bed. He needs to rest, Jenny replied confidently. Raphael's eyes widened. No one dared to interrupt the boss while he was working. Jenny was the first. Intrigued by the situation, Raphael decided to follow her discreetly. Jenny entered the study without knocking. As she stepped inside, she found Julian sitting at his desk, focused on the laptop in front of him, completely unaware of her presence. With determination, Jenny stepped forward and grabbed the document from Julian's hand. Raphael flinched at the sight. Normally, anyone who dared to do such a thing would face serious consequences. He wanted to salute his boss's wife for her boldness but wisely held back. Julian turned with a cold glare, but the moment he saw Jenny standing before him, his expression softened. You're a human being, not a robot, Jenny said as she tossed the document aside. Julian, slightly surprised, tried to brush off Jenny's comment and resumed typing on his computer. When did you wake up? He asked, attempting to change the subject. Jenny forcefully closed the laptop in front of him and repeated, I said you're human, not a robot. Leaning back in his chair, Julian calmly asked, Did you eat something after waking up? Frustration built in Jenny's chest. What are you doing? Ignoring me won't fix the problem. Your assistant told me everything. Julian shot a cold glare at Raphael, who tensed up upon hearing his name. He started to fear that instead of Jenny saving him, she might have just made things worse for him. Sensing Julian's stare at Raphael, Jenny quickly intervened, don't look at him like that. I asked him, and he told me about your extreme work habits. It's a good thing I asked, or I'd never have known how much of a workaholic my husband really is. Julian glanced at Raphael with an unspoken message, We'll deal with this later at the office. Then he turned back to Jenny, seeing the fire in her eyes. Feeling the pressure, Julian finally responded, It's not true. He's exaggerating. Jenny slammed her hand on the desk. Oh, I know exactly who's lying and who isn't. Your assistant told me you work day and night, barely sleep, and often skip meals. The doctor even said you should be sleeping at least eight hours. Julian, clearly annoyed, turned to Raphael and declared, No bonus for you for three months. Jenny, not satisfied, slammed her hand on the desk again. I dare you to challenge me on this, Julian. Raphael, watching the scene unfold, silently applauded Jenny. Finally, someone was standing up to the boss, possibly saving him from Julian's wrath. Jenny took a deep breath trying to calm her frustration. I've decided something. Since no one else is keeping an eye on you, I will. Starting tomorrow, you're only allowed to work for one hour after dinner, and you won't leave the house without having breakfast. I'll make sure you get lunch at your office every day. Business can wait, but your health is more important. With that, Jenny turned on her heel and left the room. Julian sat there, still in shock. Jenny truly cared for him, and the fact that she was willing to prepare lunch for him daily touched his heart. A small smile tugged at the corner of his lips as he realized how much her concern meant to him. Thank you all. Have a nice day. 
Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe, so that the admin is more enthusiastic to provide entertainment for all of you. See you in the next video.